Hi, everybody. Hey, welcome back to the show. Sitting next to me is a gentleman that, if you've been to the sports shows at all, I mean, if you haven't been living under a rock, you have seen something at the shows called the hog trough. And it is one of the most interesting aspects of the show. Seminars are done on it. Anglers can go up and demonstrate lures, presentations, and what have you. It is an amazing deal. With me right now, folks, is Bill Hurt. Hi, Bill. Welcome to the show. Glad to be here. Man, I'll tell you, that's an interesting deal, you guys. Now, how many of those things are you guys dragging around the country? Well, this particular company has four of them that is active in the country. Every one of them is out this week on a show. Uh, we're, we go to anywhere that they have a sports show and they need a platform for seminars, but it, it's just great entertainment and it's a great teaching and learning tool. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of substantial brains in the fishing world that get up on that stage. I think I've been going on the hog trough for... Huge names. Huge yeah, names. Huge, huge, big names. You're talking about the players. Van Dam. Van Dam. Uh, Gerald Swindle. You know, you <laughs> name it. They've been on these things. Yeah, they have. And, and Billy Hurt. Uh, he he has been on them time, too. Oh, Billy Hurt. Billy Hurt. And Billy Hurt has been on those, two as well. Oh, my goodness. Folks, I tell you what, I've spent I've spent a number of different days on the hog trough at various shows, and and it's intimidating when you go up there. It's a narrow tank that's about oh 32, 34 inches wide, maybe, from from sprayer to sprayer. I mean, yeah, you're right in the right neighborhood. So when you're up there and you try, and it's about, I'm going to guess, about 40 feet long. If you're scared of heights, you're never going to make it. No, no, but but you can't you can't make a mistake casting either. <laughs> You'll look like a fool. Well, <laughs> and we've had people who didn't quite get into the tank, especially if you if you go outside and there's a little breeze or this or that. I mean, you have half of the table, not even half of this table with that you had to put your lure into. And uh, some people have been are great fishermen, uh -huh. but they fish in these big lakes, especially like Lake Erie and everything like that, and they stand out there and they make long overhand casts. And they, they never make those narrow, straight, go into the small areas. So when they get up there, um, they got this little narrow chute that they have to cast in, and they're not accustomed to it. And in all honesty, at the uh, narrow chute also has a very defined end on it <laughs> yes it stops <laughs> it stops um, for sure so oh. overhand cast doesn't work very well you have to learn to <laughs> flip and pitch and uh it, it's uh it, it's very interesting to get up there but a lot of people have the issues when they get up there with the height because yeah. when you're in, in i try to tell them imagine you're in a boat because that's what you are you have the front end of a boat right right, right. You never fall out of your boat out there in the water, yeah. typically. Yeah. And, and typically, you wouldn't fall out of the boat up there. But something about when you look down, there's no water to catch you. Yeah. There, <laughs> there, there, there's a concrete floor about nine foot below that would catch you if you fall out. And it's gonna hurt. And it it gets in their mind that. You know, I, I'm, I'm up high, I'm up high, and, and it really bothers some it, people. It is truly intimidating. i got to tell you, folks, I was up on the trough yesterday, and uh, Billy doesn't like when you hook his pet fish. I mean, and nobody would, because it's quite a challenge for these guys to drag these fish around to all these shows. They, and they keep them alive. And keep them alive, yeah, and, and not be contaminated with different diseases and what have you. But long story short, I did a bass seminar yesterday, and, uh, and well... One of them got in my way, so we didn't think too much about it. You know, we got we got it released and everything. Everything was fine. So I came back at three o'clock to do my musky seminar, and I take out a nine-inch attack dog, folks, to show how top waters work for musky fishing. You are not gonna believe it, but a about a fourteen-inch bass, maybe twelve to fourteen-inch bass, come up and absolutely annihilated that attack dog. Now I'll be honest with you. Bill didn't like it, but the crowd didn't mind it. <laughs> <laughs> the crowd always enjoys the excitement. Uh, bass are, when they are very aggressive, people don't realize if they want a lure, if you cast a lure out and a bass says, I want that, you literally cannot take it away yeah, from me. I, I have to agree with you. I have to agree and, with you. And, yeah. um, 
on the other hand, if he don't want it, you can't feed it to him either. So, you know, <laughs> they control their own world. I want to ask you a question um, because this is something that probably doesn't get asked to you very often. What is the back end structure of the business? You guys, you guys raise the fish, you host and harbor the fish, you have to treat them for diseases and all these things. You have a lot of naturing and nurturing that goes on for your fish. What a lot of people don't realize and understand, because of our game laws at home in Tennessee, it's TWRA up here, they call them the DNR yeah, and yeah, things like that. Yeah. You, their law says you cannot use wild fish for profit, which means I can't go out to my local favorite lake and catch a bunch of fish and bring in here and put in the tank because we're obviously we're here to make a profit. You're violating some laws. So you'd be violating laws and they would come in and write you a bunch of tickets that you can't pay. <laughs> so what you have to do is you have to buy them from uh, fish farms. So a lot of fish farms do raise bass. They're commercially raised. They're raised in an environment without, uh, they have no disease. It's a disease-free environment. So when I buy my fish, I can take them across state lines alive because they come from a certified disease-free hatchery. You know, that's a lot of words to yeah, say. Yeah, <laughs> and they're tight, too. They're not easy words to be one after the other. So, so go ahead. You, you have to also realize that up here in the wintertime, you guys get hard water. Yeah, it's cold ice. And, and yeah, we don't get it down in Tennessee like you guys do. <laughs> no. But if you're going to have fish up here, you have to get them before the water freezes, and then you have to have vats to hold them in. So Jim, back at his shop, has uh, three different sets of vats that he uses to hold fish in. So he's got fish held in, in there for all year for these four tanks. And that's why sometimes we have, we have to use fish on multiple shows because you can't get any. Uh, everything's froze, the nets won't work, and, and so you use the fish that you've got to do show to show to show to show, to show. Yeah. if we have fish to start getting stressed then when they go back to the shop we put them in a, a what we call the hospital which is a tank that's full of medication things the fish stay in there when they get in really good shape and they look good they go back out on the show so they're kind of babied and pampered and the oxygen is pumped into the water continuously so they're they always have oxygen to breathe if you've got water over their gills and you got oxygen over their gills, they're going to be good. Yeah, it's clean as, water. As long That's as your key. pH is right, you're good to go. And you got to stay away from all the harmful chemicals like chlorine. Yeah. Oh boy. Any chlorine goes in, you lose your fish. Is that why? Is that why they don't live in a swimming pool? Uh, <laughs> yes. And, and you know, it's funny you say that. So many people will go and catch two or three big fish, and they think, "Oh, I got a big swimming pool. I'm gonna put them in my swimming pool." Yeah, it don't work. It don't work. <laughs> it don't work. You can treat your swimming pool and take all the chlorine out of it, yeah. and and your fish will survive for a while. But what other people don't know is when you put chlorine in the water, it kills everything in it. Yeah, Fish need certain enzymes in that water. To survive. So even though you take the chlorine out, you haven't added anything in. So what we do is we kill the chlorine, and then we put enzymes back into the water to help the fish in the slime coat. Otherwise, their skin would dry out. It'd be just kind of like a dry water, yeah. and they get nothing from it. It, it. There's a science to it, and we have been doing it for so many years. You learn by killing fish, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately, that's We trip. have accidents. Yeah. We lose fish. And over the years, we figured out what really, really works to keep these fish alive and keep them healthy. And when we release them at the end of the show seasons, they're usually always healthier when we release them than when we than when you got them in. Hey, folks, come on down to the show, folks. Take a look at the hog trough. Learn from the people who are on the trough teaching you. There's a stage set down in front. There's all kinds of visual aids that are going on. On the trough itself is demonstrations. Bill Hurd is running the hog trough. He's I've seen him at a number of shows, guys. This man knows what he's doing. He's taking a real good job. He's put in front of you. You know, there's not almost 90 million anglers out here in the United States that spend at least one day on the water, buy a fishing license, or have family members that fish without the license. 
But the bottom line is it's a large community. The more we understand about the fish, the more we understand about how to catch the fish, the more apt you are to get in the sport and have fun. This man brings a tank out, brings the fish, brings everything so we as educators can do just that. We can present to you, the audience, how to do it. Bill, if you don't mind, I want to say thanks for coming on the show. I appreciate it. You and I are, well, we're friends. Yep. Well, maybe not, but <laughs> we are. We are for now. <laughs> yeah, for now. Yeah, but we'll get we'll get through it. But we're going to be seeing you, I think, at least at our Pickwick tournament. Yes, I plan on being there. As a matter of fact, we were just in the process of getting all the entries signed and getting money paid in. Um, this is going to be. Oh, it's going to be an awesome tournament. It it it. It's going to show who is very versatile. But oh, absolutely. Yeah. All our lives we fish for three to five big bites. Yeah. You know, we want yeah. these big fish. And now, if you fish all day and you get five bites, you're going to lose. You're going to lose. You're yeah. going to lose. You're so going to lose. Somebody we've got, got to turn things around, and it, it will be a blast. Everybody will have fun. Uh, guaranteed you're going to get one good day of fishing anyway. <laughs> When, when Bill walked up on the stage, the first thing he said was, ah, that trophy's mine. <laughs> so the bottom line is he'll be at Pickwick. We're all going to be having a good time. We are at the Sentinel Sports Show in West Allis, Wisconsin. You guys are suburb of Milwaukee. Come see the hog trap. Come meet Bill. Come have some fun. With that being said, folks, we're going to get out of here right now. I want to say thanks for tuning in. Don't go anywhere. We have more coming from the sports show. Bill, thanks again.